Hey everybody and Merry Christmas and welcome to the Barry Vera Show. I'm so excited today to have as my special guest, Ann Mitchell. And Ann is the co-author of one of the most beautiful cookbooks, Come to the Table. And it is really one of my absolute favorites to go to. Thank you so much. Well, we had fun doing it. I know you did. And she co-authored with Benita Long. Susan Wilson, who also did the beautiful food displays and the flowers in the book. Then Sammy Anderson did all the photography. And Steve Wingfield was also involved. And you know, that's my maiden name. Yeah. Thanks <laughs> so you can. I, I know, I, he might be my long lost cousin. Well, what are we going to be preparing out of the book today? Today, we're going to be preparing a new potato and sweet onion gratin company meatloaf and a homemade peppermint ice cream. Well, that sounds like the perfect meal even for this weekend, but most definitely for New Year's. So I can't wait to get started. So we're going to get started first on the potatoes. Okay. So why don't you walk us through that? All right. Well, we've got the sliced new potatoes. We've got some sliced sweet Vidalia onion and some uh, grated Gruyere cheese. And I'm just going to layer the potatoes and the onions. So I'll start by putting half of the potatoes in the And we did grease that dish. pan before we got started. Did you know, the pan. Even, even when it's, it doesn't seem like it'll stick, I always recommend that for We're leftovers. Put half the onions and then put some nice little cubes of butter on top. And this casserole does not have any milk or cream like a lot of potato gratins do. But the onions cook down and... Um, and that's where the liquid comes from. And that's from. where the liquid comes from. And we're going to add a little nature's season salt here. Well, you know, the nature's season is something I use quite a bit at home, too. It is a combination of salt, pepper, garlic, and onion. So, so it's, it's got, a good general seasoning. Absolutely. Then we're going to start with the second layer. Well, you know, Anne, on your book, I remember when it first came out, it's so beautiful that, you know, it's almost like I was scared to take it in the kitchen. <laughs> but have you ever had a cookbook that you just didn't want to mess it up? But, you know, the photography of, you know, the actual food, the way that you presented everything, it's just amazing. Um, but I've learned now that it doesn't matter if it gets a little food on the picture. No, that then doesn't. when you're showing it to somebody, they say, well, obviously you made that recipe a number of times because there's food all over your page in the cookbook. All right. All right. So now are you ready for me gonna, to put I'm some cheese add a on there? Nature season, and, and then y'all she pop grated it with this cheese. cheese herself. I can tell because it's did. so fluffy and nice. Well, one of the things that we're going to do today, Ann, is she has been nice enough to donate to the show a copy of this book and her other book called Share the Bounty. And we're going to be giving that away along with a very Vera Show apron. And then at the end of the show, we're making peppermint ice cream. We're going to give away an ice cream maker. And then we're also blending all of this and our blender to make the ice cream. And the Wolf blender is also part of the giveaway. So the giveaway today is valued at over $600. $100. So if you're not lucky enough to get all these wonderful things for Christmas, you better get online and do the uh, Facebook with us today. We'll tell you more about it in a little bit. But when we come back from the break, we're going to get started on a company meatloaf. And you know, meatloaf has taken on a whole new life lately. Oh yeah. And this is one of the best recipes. So come back. And that goes in what degree oven? 350 degree oven, lightly covered with tin foil, um, just for the first half of the cooking. Perfect. Well, come back with us in just a few minutes. And I tell you, the pictures in this book, whether it was a destination that you guys went to, like this is the recipe for company meatloaf, that's a home in Highlands. Yeah. Oh, it's just beautiful and you know I said earlier we don't want to mess up the pages of the book oh. so I'm gonna let you put it over All there right. and um, we were busy during the break what did we get done well we just covered the meatloaf and put it in the oven 350 and it'll bake for 30 minutes and then we'll take the top off and let it finish 
bacon. Oh, it just smells so good. Well, I am really excited about this meatloaf recipe. You know, meatloaf has kind of taken a new turn. There's so many things to do with it. Yes, it's great. And you can even use leftovers to make little sliders, or it's great for sandwiches, so. Oh, wow, so this is this very is versatile. All right, so you want me to get started by putting the bell pepper, onion, and crackers right. in the recipe. And it's really interesting on the saltines, you said not to make it really fine. Right. And why is that? Because these saltines act almost like a strata in that they create sort of little air pockets in the meatloaf and that is what helps this one be light and not dry and Because people usually use like breadcrumbs yeah. or something. Yeah. But, but this helps lighten it up. Okay, well I'm gonna get moist. started with, with that and then you're making another, the, the gooey part. That I'm goes making in. the gooey part. So we're gonna beat up just slightly two eggs and then we're gonna add the tomato sauce. Ooh. And we've got a little marjoram and thyme. Oh, that's... Which is a nice little perky seasoning for it, and then a little salt and pepper. Okay. And then we will be ready for you to... Okay, so let me add all this in. Add all that, and then we'll combine. And then I am going to jump in with my hands, because <laughs> I just think mixing it up by hand is the way to go. And, um, you know, one of the things that you had said about this recipe is that how meatloaf gets tough is if you overwork it. So probably using your hands is the best way to go with it. I think so. Correct? That's right. All right, I'm gonna hand you that right. too. Let's don't get it on the book. No. Ooh, this is the fun part. <laughs> you know, this is when the young person, the grandchildren love to get in there. Can't you see? They do love that. Can't you that. see McCord jumping oh, into yeah. this yeah. meat? Oh my gosh. <laughs> It's like a big mud pie. Okay, now this is the part that I also wanted to ask about, was we're baking this in a square pan. Right. And usually when I make my sister's meatloaf recipe, I put it in a loaf pan. So why are we baking this in a, in a shallower pan? Well, this is a very moist meatloaf and it really doesn't cut and make slices like, you know, you're, you think what you think of as a meatloaf. Right. So, um, we just put it in the square pan and then you can either scoop it out or you can cut it and slice it. Um, okay, so do you think that's you good to. enough? I think so. All right, so I'm gonna bring that forward. And we're just gonna press it in there. Ooh, yum. And it will shrink, um, so it fills the pan now, but it will shrink down as it cooks. Well, this hamburger the... meat, of course, is the ground chuck that they have on sale every Tuesday at the Fresh Market for $2.99. And there is no limit to how much you can buy. And this would be something great to, to make a bunch of them while you're right. doing it. Yeah. And they because freeze it, great. Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask you, does this freeze really it well? It freezes really okay, well. so now you're mixing up the sauce. All right, this is the sauce that's gonna be the topping and we've got light brown sugar and a little red wine vinegar and some marjoram and thyme. God, these ingredients. Yeah, it's it's um, quite, it's kind of like a, a sweet and spicy topping, which also helps seal the moisture in the meatloaf. Oh, wow, and so we're just gonna pour that on top? Go right pour ahead. Pour it on top. Oh, me. I cannot wait to try this. This is one of the recipes in the book that I haven't done myself. So, no offense to my sister, but I, <laughs> this may end up being my favorite meatloaf. Okay, we're doing a giveaway today, and we're gonna tell you more about that in a few minutes. And when we come back from the break, oh my goodness, peppermint ice cream and perfect for this sort of meal too, because it's light and mini. So come back and join us in just a few minutes. Vera's Corner is brought to you by Georgia Bank and Trust and Southern Bank and Trust. Today I want to take a minute or two to tell you about my favorite kitchen store. Birchline Gourmet and Home is your kitchen destination. Now located in the Myrtle Beach Mall, Birchline offers all of the kitchen essentials. Don't worry if you aren't in the Myrtle Beach area because they have an extensive website, which I'm on right now. 
Look for great casserole dishes by Royal Dalton and Lennox to use when you want to make the meatloaf and the potato gratin. And don't forget to stock up on your favorite ice cream scoops and spades. You'll be ready to make the peppermint ice cream from today's episode for all your friends and family. Shop their extensive collection of cutlery and cookware including your favorite name brands. Getting married? Set your wedding registry at Birchline and get exactly what you need. This isn't just a kitchen store. Birchline offers great home items for the dining room, bedroom, and even the laundry room. Count on the great customer service at Birchline Gourmet and Home to help you with all of your shopping needs. They will take your skills to the next level. And don't forget to like them on Facebook so you can stay up to date on all of the latest items. Go to birchline.com and start shopping using the promo code VERYVERA, all one word, for a surprise discount. Welcome back, everybody. And oh my goodness, I'm here with my friend Susan Wilson, who is also one of the co-authors of the book and has been a longtime friend. So y'all are like sisters, right? Long time. Do you Long fight like time. sisters? Yes. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Love and do. hate relationship here. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, we are looking through the cookbook and I'm just enjoying so much. You know, I've made some. In fact, here's the beef tenderloin recipe. I can't tell you how many times I've made Delicious. that. But, um, you know, and Ann is getting started on the base for the ice cream, the peppermint ice cream, and we're going to let you be working on that okay. while Susan and I talk a little bit about how in the world did this project get started? Well, I got a call one day from Benita Long, and she said, you're not going to believe this, but I want to do a cookbook with inspirational quotes, and she went on to tell me her ideas, and we talked and talked, and I was leaving town, and I thought, this will never come to fruition, but it sounded good. So about six months later, she called and said, I actually have a publisher. Oh, wow. And we want to go on with the book. And I thought about it a minute, and I said, well, Benita, if we're going to do a cookbook, why don't we call our friend Ann Mitchell, who actually cooks? I know, because I'm sitting here thinking, <laughs> wait a minute, Benita, and I love Benita, don't get me wrong, but a cookbook was the primary purpose of the book. Well, yes, one of them. It was a celebrating hospitality. Exactly. So she wanted the pretty pictures, the wonderful inspirational quotes and delicious recipes. Well, and you know, your expertise with, you know, everybody, of course, in Augusta knows that you've for years just really been a wizard with flower arranging. And your years at design images <laughs> and, you know, knowing how to pick the perfect container. So we're actually looking at this is your dining room. It is. That's at, in the at book. its finest moment. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, it looks like the door is getting ready to open to a beautiful dinner party. Um, you know, in terms of that was your house, but how in the world? I mean, this this book is loaded with gorgeous homes and outside settings and living rooms and dining rooms. How did you come up with all your spaces and determining? Well, Anne and I got together and decided which recipes were going to go in which chapters because Benita had already done all the chapter selections, and then. I would stay up at night trying to figure out where to take the pictures and how to do the pictures. And we used every single friend we had at the time. <laughs> you warned we to, everybody. We went to North Carolina. We went to the beaches. We had fun. Uh, well, and certainly I know those friends are really happy that they agreed because the book has been so successful. Um, you know, not only a beautiful coffee table piece, but there are the recipes are so great. And you know, looking at this, you get ideas for how to do your table yourself. Well, let's let's look over here. Anne is a busy bee. Tell us real <laughs> quickly what is the most important thing about the steps that you're doing here. Okay, I have brought the milk just to a low simmer and I've okay. stirred in the sugar so that it will dissolve. And then I have added the heavy whipping cream and half and half and now I'm putting in the peppermint extract. And we love the Fresh Market brand of both of those and milk so products. Now this will be ready um, to put in the refrigerator and chill for two hours before you put it in the machine. Okay. And actually I started a batch earlier and we have got it um, ready in the machine to 
pour out into the bowl and put in the freezer. Oh, wow. And then you added the, pe what point do you add the peppermint candy? You add the peppermint candy just at the very end when it's still soft enough that it gets in there and gets mixed and breaks up just a little. And you want to use a fairly soft peppermint, not a hard one because you don't want anyone to crack their teeth. Oh my gosh. Well, <laughs> so. you know, both of your grandchildren were in the book. You've incorporated recipes that are great for um, individual entertaining like a small dinner party. There's things that can be used at cocktail parties. There are outdoor recipes. You know, speaking of outdoors, the other, rest, the other cookbook, um, Share the Bounty, there is a completely hilarious story about this. Real quick, tell us about it. There were a lot of funny stories in this book. Um, we were in Highlands, North Carolina, where Ann and I both had a home right around, and we borrowed this fellow's gazebo, and we went, we had Sammy, our photographer, and we went to take the picture, and the wind was blowing like 45 miles an hour. <laughs> Everything was going everywhere. So I was back here trying to set up the camera with Sammy, and we made Ann crawl under the table, and she was holding the tablecloth down so it wouldn't be... Well, that's one reason to, to stay side. flexible. You might be asked to hold a tablecloth under the table. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay, we've got a lot to do. We're going to finish everything up, and when we come back from the break, Susan is going to put her expertise to work on setting the beautiful presentation for this, and we're going to enjoy some delicious food. Welcome back, everybody, and what a celebration. I'm so excited. And you know, Susan, we were talking earlier about the book and the pages in the book, and one of the best parts to me, not only the recipes are great, but the floral arrangements and the place settings. So tell me a little bit about that. Well, one of the themes of the book is celebrating hospitality. So not only when you invite guests into your home, um, you want, of course, have delicious food. Yes. And But you also, want to have pretty table settings and I love to use the square cloths and coordinate your flowers with your china in your dining room and it makes your guests feel special when they come in and they see that you've gone to a little bit of trouble. Absolutely. Well, Ann, let's walk back through what all okay. we've done today. What we have made the new potato and sweet onion gratin and the company meatloaf and we have plated it up over here with um, some little green peas because you want to add some color to your plate and have three ingredients at least so it will look balanced. And then we have made the peppermint ice cream, which I'm going to Ooh. top with some crushed peppermint. Oh, that just looks fantastic. And of course, we just happen to have a very, very show cookie to go on the side of the plate. Well, I actually did kind of a twist to um, the idea for the ice cream, which is in front of both of you ladies. Don't be tempted as I talk about the way we twisted up the peppermint ice cream today. So what I did was I put some of the ice cream that we didn't use in my Wolf blender. I added in a little bit of heavy cream, some white chocolate liqueur, a little bit of peppermint schnapps, just blended that up, poured that into the martini glass, then I topped it off with a little bit of whipped cream, the crushed peppermint on the top, and you can do the candy cane on the side or either, you know, a straw, but just again, like you said, Susan, make it festive, especially at this time of year. It makes your guests feel like that you went to a little bit of extra trouble on their behalf. Well, speaking of making a milkshake and using the Wolf Blender, um, I want to talk a little bit about the giveaway that we're going to have today and for those of you that love the idea of these beautiful cookbooks we're also going to be selling these on our website at veryvera.com but today the giveaway is the wolf blender we're also doing the Quasinart uh, ice cream maker which we use today we've got a very vera apron so we don't get messed up when we're making all these delicious things both of the cookbooks that you have so graciously given and the way you go about being a winner and you know this we have had the best winners this season so far. We just had lots of people that have done these contests so we want you to like us on Facebook like our page, share the contest, and then post your favorite family tradition. 
at this time of year. We want to know a little bit more about that. So I certainly want to say to both of you how much I've enjoyed having you today, how successful your cookbooks have been. I that agree. it's, it's you know, they're beautiful books to have sitting on the table. Opened up with a beautiful page on the kitchen counter is, is great. And then Benita Long for having the idea in the first place, for heaven's sakes, and reaching out to you and then you recommended Susan. So, um, you know, as we go into New Year's weekend next weekend, we're all fussing about a, the Christmas week that we've had this week, um, but certainly the giveaway is going to give another opportunity to, for folks to maybe have something to look forward to. We want them to do that. So all of the recipes for today are on our website at veryvera.com, but certainly we want to invite you to um, have interest in these books. As I said, they'll be sold on our website. And as we always say at the Very Vera Show, no matter what you do, do it in good taste. I'm going to let y'all maybe have a little snippet of that oh, wow. dandy little holiday drink. To the I want everybody to have a happy new year and come back yeah. in 2017 as we Ooh. celebrate the rest of the Very Vera Show as we enter Delicious. into this brand new year. Isn't that good? <laughs> Thank you <Delicious>. so much. <laughs> Great. Come back. Thank you.